Today, we are talking about something really unusual we did at Acuity. We became a certified B Corp. So what in the world does that even mean? Why do we do it? And what was the process like? All of that here today on Drink While You Think, the happy hour conversation between a couple of guys building their firm in really weird ways. I am your host, Kenji, with my main man, Matthew, as always. Matthew, who is our sponsor today? Today's episode of Drink While You Think is sponsored by B Local Georgia, bringing B Corps to the Peach State. B Local Georgia, check it out. If you're a Georgia company looking to make an impact on Georgia and the world. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, that was good. That was solid. <laughs> um, luckily, you know, even though Matthew sold that well, we actually have the guy who's the chair, the creator of B Local Georgia here. You can see our man who's always got the badass beard, um, always rocking and representing Georgia. Uh, our man, Nathan Stuck. Nathan, happy to have you here talking about, we'll, we'll see why he's a guest when we're talking about the B Corp stuff. Tell us who you are and then tell us what you're drinking today. So yeah, Nathan Stuck. Uh, yeah, I started B Local Georgia in 2018. I still chair it. It's a nonprofit here. Um, and then I also... Uh, started what 2021. Well, we'll get into the whole backstory of why I started Profitable Purpose Consulting, but um, joined the ranks of the entrepreneur world uh, full time last year. And uh, thanks to an initial client who will, uh, you're probably starting to figure out who it was. So yeah, that's me. Uh, Profitable Purpose, nonprofits. I'm, oh, I also, let's see, I teach a B Corp class at the University of Georgia. I'm also on the board of B Academics. And I'm the executive director of the uh, Build Southeast Planning Committee, so uh, which we'll talk about as well, coming to Raleigh in 2020. And you're drinking? Oh, oh, and I'm drinking. So I'm trying to cover all my B Corps. I'm actually drinking Creature Comforts uh, Paradiso. Well, I made my own Paradiso. So it's Athena with another lovely B Corp, Tarani's uh, Raspberry Syrup, served like it's supposed to be served in Berlin. Um, and I couldn't find a good chalice, but I did find another Beat Corp uh, beverage holder to pour it into. So I am drinking it out of a New Belgium uh, glass. So I'm trying to, I got three B Corps in right there. Triple B Corp right there in the product glass. placement at its best. Boom. That's amazing. Matthew, what do you got? I got a red here today, the sticky oatmeal stout I'm going with, and I'm going to pour it just to make Kenji happy. So Kenji tries to get me to pour stuff in a glass. So. I, I do. That's the proper way to consume these. Um, so Matthew, Matt, Nathan had three B Corps right there that he's consuming. Matthew had zero. I'm going to get two here. I'm also drinking a Creature Comforts. Um, I am drinking their automatic pale ale. We love all things Creature Comforts. They are the only beer we actually consume at Acuity Con each year. They're our kind of, I wouldn't say our beer sponsor, but that's, that's who we always have there. And I'm going to consume it inside of a nice sweet yeti uh acuity yes. mug unfortunately yeti's not a b corp yet but acuity is so this is like a double b corp here uh so gentlemen cheers cheers mm. cheers all right let's just get this out of the way because people have been asking us like crazy because the word is leaked out somehow about us becoming a b corp matthew matthew is like Enough waiting around. Time to make an announcement. That was well, how long we've we been waiting? Like two and a half years. <laughs> we'll Three, talk about that years, process. Six years. That process was was something. Rude um, told, man. But people were like, "What in the world is this B Corp thing?" All right, you're the master of B Corp, Nathan. What the hell is a B Corp? <laughs> B corporations are for profit businesses certified to use their business as a force for good. So, um, kind of like lead is to a building. Uh, you have to go through a whole certification process to prove that, you know, the building's sustainable and it's, you know, it used less, you know, less, uh, less of a carbon footprint, all these things where there's an outside nonprofit that comes in and verifies that. B Lab, the parent nonprofit certifies B Corp. So there's a whole rigorous, which we now know, uh, B impact assessment that you have to take. There's 200 possible points. You have to get to 80. So those following at home know that that's a failing grade. That would be a 40 on a test. Um, but it's really hard to fail. It's really hard to get to that 80. So, and then when you get to it, not only, you know, I think most things in life we go, 
yeah, we're doing a lot of good stuff at our company. Everybody goes, oh, that's great. B Lab's like, oh, that's nice. Uh, show us. And so you submit your your application and the assessment. You've hopefully gotten to eighty, hopefully with a little buffer because we needed it. Um, <laughs> and then you go through this whole evaluation phase and then a verification phase, where essentially, what well, we're talking to people who watch this know the accounting world. You go through an audit, and they go through. You get an analyst that comes in and audits everything that you said you do, uh, and you kind of have to prove it with documentation and data and. Um, a lot of back and forth. So it's yeah. it's a rigorous process. Anytime you see the B Corp logo, you know that that company, even if you don't understand everything that goes into it, what you do need to understand is it's really hard to get. And it is a, a that company has done a lot and is doing a lot of good in the world. How many, I mean, how many are there right now, B Corps out there? See, I don't know, 6,500. I think it's like okay. 65, 22 or something like that. Yeah. So, and it's, uh, what is it? 88 countries now, I think. And like 187 industries. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It, I mean, it's crazy to go. I mean, I went to a B, a B lab Deutschland event when I was in Germany for the NFL game, I went up to Berlin and said, Hey, and they went, okay, cool. We'll plan a little happy hour get together. So it's cool to like, even to be in Germany and see these companies that are doing crazy things. I've been to the conference in Amsterdam, the European summit every year. So I went, I'm going again this summer and just to meet some of these companies. And that was my first kind of like, these are my people, you know, and then you go to like champions retreats in North America and you meet just really inspiring entrepreneurs of both kind of the social enterprise side and also the you know, there's a traditional like accounting firm or the company I used to work for, you know, just kind of an IT consulting firm, traditional business, but really focused on more than just kind of like, okay, cool. That's great. We have this great business, but like, what's our legacy? What's our impact on our community? What's our impact on our workers? Those types of things. So, yeah. Who would be like, you know, on the short list of if folks are like, okay, cool. You know, I've never heard of Acuity or whatever, or, you know, whatever, but like, who are some of the notable ones out there that most people would recognize who are B Corps? So right now I'm currently modeling a TS Designs t-shirt um, when it was given out at Champions Retreat several years yeah. ago. And so TS Designs is out of North Carolina, but some of the ones you would recognize, and I'm not going to get up and fully model for you, but I am wearing some Patagonia shorts. Uh, my undershirt is Bombas. My socks are from Bombas. My shoes are Tom's shoes. I'm trying to like look around the room. Like what else do I have in here that's B Corp? Um, but yeah, yeah. Well, there's my backpack is uh, Tom Bean. Um, so yeah, there's brands that, you know, Tom's of Maine. I don't have toothpaste in here to model, but Tom's right. of Maine, uh, you know, deodorant, toothpaste, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's it's really grown in, in those like flagship brands, I think have always given us a way to be like, like Warby Parker. Um, but yeah. yeah, there's, there's companies that, you know, Tillamook cheese, uh, I think Cabot cheese is B, yeah, Cabot's definitely a B Corp. Like there's brands where like brew doctors, kombucha, where you're going to regret listening to this episode because you're going to go next time you're at Kroger or Publix or Whole Foods, you're just going to start seeing this B Corp logo everywhere. Um, and maybe wish you'd never met me, but I think it's a good thing. <laughs> to me, it's the whole point of that logo is knowing like where seeing that logo helps me know where as a, as a person who tries to live my values, where I should direct um, my expenditures, both on a business side, when I'm trying to find service providers and on a um, personal side of, you know, yeah. I need to face deodorant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, when you look around, it, it's a, it's a pretty amazing group of businesses, right. And to your point of ones who are like, all right, cool. We've, we've, not flippantly, like build, doing the building the business is really damn hard. Like it is hard. You're a new entrepreneur. You see it. Matthew, I've been doing it for a while. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just difficult and challenging. And then to hold yourself even a greater accountability of like, all right, but I think there's even more we can do like to differentiate ourselves. And I, I like that. I like that you said legacy. Cause I think that is something that's in a lot of people's minds. It's a bit of like, what are we doing this for? Like, of course we want to keep the lights on a roof over our head diapers on the kids, whatever it might be. Right. But like, also it's like, all right, I hope that all this effort we spent building something impacts lives in a positive way. And there is some positive legacy out of it. I think that's, what's cool about the community is it's like-minded people who are just trying to figure out where can we have an impact and a broader legacy and, and make that impact. Uh, I think for good, I know for, for us, I'll mention for me, one of the things that really jumped out, um, that kind of started driving me this direction. I've always had an affinity. I mean, I'm a, I love the environment, outdoors kind of guy, all the things there. I've wanted to build something more intentional, but like, I remember 
uh, a number of years ago during, it was really during the Black Lives Matter movement. And uh, I've spoken about this before, but not a ton. But I remember we had team members who were going on LinkedIn and were doing posts about defunding the police. And we had other team members who came to me and said, Kenji, I have a spouse. I have loved ones who are in law enforcement. Like this is really difficult for me to see this. Like what, what, what are we doing here? Like, what's the, like, you need to do something and say something. And I think, I, I know I talked to Matthew about, it, I know, but I was also like, my initial response was like, what do you mean? We're, we're just trying to help clients. Like we're just, what, why, why are we even, you know, I don't want to be in the middle of all this. And like, it was just really hard. Like, like, what is the right answer there? And so we started just kind of like, what, what do you do? And asking around. And then it kind of led to some other CEOs who I know who were kind of in um, the B Corp world and kind of there and, you know, who gave me some good counsel and good advice about like what to do. Like, how do you start addressing that? And it just kind of dawned on me like, man, this world is complicated. There's a lot of challenging social issues that our, our people face, that we face. And, you know, that notion of, I think Matthew and I are, again, we were trying to help people through the PPP and all kinds of things at the same time. Like it was challenging. This is during COVID. And I think we recognize like, okay, that the old school way would be like, hey, hey, y'all, we don't bring that stuff into work. Like it's part of life. People bring that stuff in. Like we have to figure out how to start even having some conversations and letting people just have a dialogue. And I think to me, that was one of the big things that when I think about why, like we started going, we need to be in communities of people who are addressing these, like, We've always, right, Matthew, Matthew, have always kind of put ourselves in groups of other people like, oh, I want to use them as a sounding board. And I think we saw that like, oh, the B Corp world, that's a community we wanted to be part of because there's going to be the next issue. There's plenty of them coming of like, how do you, and I think you want to, we wanted to surround ourselves with other people who are thinking progressively about the issues in this world and what part businesses and leaders play in them. So I know that was for us one of the, one of the big things that kind of got us down that path of. Let's, be, let's get in that community. Let's see it grow and let's be part of, you know, be local Georgia and the broader global community um, was one of the things that kind of got us there. I'm curious, like you guys were pretty front runner back in your previous job at, you know, at Vic. Yeah. Which was a sales force, right? You guys were a sales force implementer, right? Yeah. Kind of, yep. Yep. So I know I learned, I learned just enough to be dangerous or to sound like I know what I'm doing um, on Salesforce. I know all the right terminology, like flows and, you know, pick lists and, but I don't, they didn't let me touch the technology. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it's interesting. I'm glad you brought that up too. Cause I remember you sharing that when we did the be local Georgia, like yeah. I think it was 2021. It was like our first, like back in person at, uh, Oh, uh, three uh, taverns. Uh, three taverns yeah. Yeah. And well, apparently uh, all we do is go to places where they all we do is beer drink right beer. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug for our event on March 23rd, a celebration of black entrepreneurship where we'll be drinking Atlantucky Castleberry Pills. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. So he's like, um, yeah, we have a we have a good, yeah. Anyway, um, you should come. Anyway, uh, you know, I you know, and I I think what you said too is you when you boil down these issues, and sometimes, you know, I don't want to say that that I, you know, you, you do want to keep politics out of work. But everything now is politicized. And it, it, but if you boil down what goes into the B Corp assessment, the governance section, it's transparency, it's openness, it's you know that the, the, probably an overused buzzword, candor. But you know it's your annual impact report. It's quantifying like your impact and what you do. You go to the workers section. Oh, my wife's about to be home. I hope you can edit this because the dogs are going to lose it. Um, <laughs> but the workers section you have, or we'll just have some fun background noise. Uh, the worker section has, you know, it's it's employee benefits, it's recruitment, it's things that go into recruitment, retention, your people being happy working for you, people wanting to work for you. Like these mm -hmm. aren't like there's nothing really that device. Like even when you, you you the example you shared of like having that conversation, you want people to be able to bring their authentic selves to work. And how do you facilitate that dialogue and get people to find, you know, the gray, the middle area of like, OK, we're just shouting over each other. And I think it's a it's a it's it's similar to what you know is happening in society as a whole where we don't really listen we don't facilitate that dialogue you know kind of like another b corp jen graham what she's doing with inclusive of mm -hmm. 
you know, and I've been to one of her facilitated in-person events and you leave and you're sitting at a table with people who normally you probably wouldn't associate with, not in a bad way, but maybe just our circles would never cross and our opinions are very different. And you're finding all this like, oh, and you're on like, you serve on the rotary board and, you know, I'm on this, you know, like you, you start picking together these places where you have these overlaps and you, and you, you discover empathy, you discover understanding. And so I think that, you know, that's kind of where we're at and that's where the business world wants to go. And, you know, and there's all this talk right now about like, you know, that whatever anti ESG, anti woke capital, and the, the demand curve shifted like Gen Z millennials, they want this stuff. Um, and they want to be able to, to be authentic at work and they want to be able to wear a hat and a t-shirt and not be, you know, this, this pretend world we used to live in. And it's, you're starting to see, and this is where the B Corp movement's on the forefront of this. You're starting to see that, businesses catch on and that the, the, you know the demand curve you're really it's like a carrot on a stick they're just chasing that demand curve for people for talent for yep. you know to sell products for customers like so you can say whatever you want i think you can legislate the and whatever as much as you want but i think at the end of the day the demand curve is the demand curve it's it's the free market doing what the free market does it's capitalism in all its beauty um becoming what people decided, you know, make capitalism work for everyone and for the long term. It's people are kind of waking up and going like, why, why is it this way? And how do we make it different? And really it's not that difficult. We're the free market. So yeah, we can kind I, of get whatever I, we want. Yeah. I feel like people don't understand the difference between doing the right thing and being a B Corp. And I, I guess the example that hit me the most was like, so we did a program called Acuity Cares, right? Which was like, we were like giving free services to not-for-profits and we're trying to offer like in Kenji and I were talking, like, let's, let's try to add like consistently add not-for-profits to that program that really need the service. So the B Corp process was like, prove it. And we're like, Oh, so we were like, Oh, and, and, and this says a lot about me and Kenji. Like, we were like, we, were like, we, we didn't know how much that meant. So 1.5% of our revenue we turned out was going to that program across yeah. these, you know, four or five not-for-profits that we have. But the, that's like, okay, like B Corp then is like, prove it. So now from a transparency perspective, you go from having a program called Acuity Cares, which could be just a marketing thing, to being able to say 1.5% of our revenue goes to not-for-profits, you're like, that's part of our commitment to that, which is much more tangible and much more defining of a standard. And we would have not done that measurement. Um, and we would not kind of have that standard if we weren't going through this process and formalizing what we were doing. That was, yeah. that's the difference to me when people ask me, What's like kind of doing the right thing and being directionally correct and being a B Corp is a B Corp knows that 1.5% of your revenue is getting contributed to not-for-profits to do their back office accounting versus having a program called Acuity Cares. Yeah, that's a great, I think that's such a great point for folks who are trying to understand. It doesn't mean you cannot have good intentions and you, you want to do the right things, there's a there's a, some standards of accountability. And I think this is one of the things I've we've talked about where the program spoke to us as accountants. We're we're analytical, like, oh, it's objective. There's measurement in data points. We're like, oh, cool. And there's a lot of wonderful programs out there that are pledges that are, you know, kind of loose commitments. And those are those are fine. Those are stepping stones and a starting place. But we actually liked the accountability of like, oh, cool, we're going to get measured. And now we have a measurement data points across a whole bunch of all the five pillars. You mentioned a couple of them that are that are you know that are part of the B Corp, you know, governance and workers and environment. All those are areas now we have met, we have data, we have hard data on, and we can say, hey, let's find, let's move the needle. Like let's pick some of those maybe pillars or our overall score, how we want to go about it, and like actually make some improvement. If we do that, we believe there'll be a correlation to whether it's improving the lives of workers or the communities we work in, just holding ourselves accountable. And I think that, again, it's mostly other, I think it's all other accounting firms that typically listen to this or just family members of me and Matthew. Um, but like, I think that B, 
other accounting firms, and there's a, there's a handful of them. I think now when I last checked, there's probably about 15 in the US. Now that's a huge, that's very small out of roughly 30,000 accounting firms in the US, 15 of us are not our B Corps. But I think more and more accounting firms should check it out because it is a very, very measurable, actionable framework. And if you're kind of into frameworks and process, B Corps not, you know, are not lacking in that. That B impact assessment, you know, and this is maybe a good spot to kind of talk about that, Nathan. Like that's no joke. That process of going through that, like, is is rigorous. And so may, yeah, maybe you want to like it, it's you, it might you, need to get it might need to get a little faster, Nathan. <laughs> yeah. So it took us a while. And so maybe, yeah, we 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 entered yes. this program a couple of years ago. And I think and it took a it took a while to get there. One to Matthew's point, it'd be good. I, you, you talked to me, you talked to me a little, about a little bit about like why that was or your opinion, but then maybe talk a little bit about what that process looks like. So someone goes, great. I think I want to do this. Like, what does that look like for people to do? Go yeah. Through. Well, one thing I want to touch on what Matthew said too, I think is, is, is super, I mean, literally every client I've ever worked with has, when you get to that part of like, you know, what percentage of your revenue or like just even not even percentage of your, how many hours did you volunteer last year? uh no idea and then you're like well your website says that you cared about the community and, and making it a better place and you're like you don't even know how much you like like we get caught up in this like what we need to be saying on our website and then we can't even like our we're not even tracking it and so to me like the beauty of this process is these things become your kpis just you know and and i can't say they're as important as revenue and sales because at the end of the day, we have to run profitable companies because we have to make payroll and we have to pay for benefits and raises and bonuses and things our team likes and healthcare. Um, but at the same time, we can still manage these KPIs just like we would manage, you know, our, our, how much, you know, what's in the pipe, what's in the pipe right now, what's closing in 30 days, how much, you know, as you're starting to make cash flow projections for your year, but it's also at the end of, you know, Q1, how many hours have we volunteered? Because we we you know we put in our annual impact report that we're going to do one percent of revenue in volunteer hours, and we've done a hundred, and we're trending towards four hundred. That's nowhere close what we committed to, and so you can start to strategize and improve throughout the year of like how do we hit this number and these commitments we yeah. made, we made in an annual impact report. So I think I'm thank you for bringing that up because I think that is one of the most powerful tools. And when you get into the branding and storytelling side of things. Um, People are starting to catch on to we sustainably source materials. What what does that mean? We care about our community. It means nothing um, until you show me. Oh, one point five percent of your revenue for none. Okay, that's uh, that's significant. Legit, um, yeah. And then then there's some some teeth to it. So anyway, going to the assessment piece uh, and going to it speeding up for a second, Matthew. I was like, oh, am I too long winded in my answers? Probably yes, but I'm like oh, <laughs> talking about the Q. Um, so. You know, going even touching back to the 2020 conversation. So at the beginning of 2020, I think like most companies, B Lab sort of battened down. Well, they're a nonprofit, but they battened down the hatches a little bit, expecting a slowdown, expecting some probably businesses to go, businesses to be focused solely on like, man, we got to stay alive. And in reality, people doubled down on their values, and like, so the demand for the certification just went. Pfft. And they weren't even close to staff for it. I mean, good problems to have. <laughs> Any business owner knows you say yes and you figure the rest out later. Um, and even working their way through that of like, oh, maybe we should at least tell people that like, yeah, we got it. Um, <laughs> we know you're in the queue. Sorry. Um, and of course, now I got, was on a call the other day and they're like, yeah, it's down to six months now. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, Kenji's going to be mad. Um <laughs> But again, we we applied right at the peak of that kind of, uh, you know, that that super high. And the demand's still high. They've just now hired and trained for it. So, um, yeah, the assessment itself, though, like all those different. I mean, I think from a from a quantifiable standpoint of what you're tracking and what goes into it, you know, percentage of employees on health care, like what, you know, basically kind of a good indicator, like how good your health care offering. But like if nobody's on it, then like great that you offer it. But probably not very good. Um, what percentage, you know, do you offer like volunteer time off and looking at, okay, if you do, what's the next step? Do employees actually take advantage of it? Are you doing anything as a company to, to drive that? Um, you know, even diversity, equity, inclusion, you know, you start to look at 
you know, another great example, my old company at Vic, when we, we, we started and we, you know, we had a female executive and a female director and female VP of sales. And we're like, we're like, like crushing this gender diversity. And then you look, run the actual company demographics, you're like 74% white dude, uh, not <laughs> crushing the diversity part that we thought we were. Um, and then being intentional of like reverse engineering, like what we put in our job descriptions of like, Oh God, we're hiring right out of college and there's 15 skills expected for this entry level job where they barely know what Salesforce is. Um, that's probably why we're not even getting MIS majors. We're getting computer science majors, which means we're getting a lot of white dudes, um, you know, and then directing your impact too of like, how do we even change that though, too? The fact that that's what computer science majors are um, and looking upstream of like, what charities could we get involved with? Um, that 10 years from now, maybe we wake up and even if we were getting computer science majors, we'd be getting a lot of diversity. So like th yeah. that element of the assessment and, and I mean, I don't know how in depth you want me to go, but like, as well, far I, as I think that the data I, remember, capture, I remember where you started us and this is maybe a, okay. For those who are listening, or like curious, like, man, I wonder like maybe today we're like, so awesome. Maybe today we're already like a B Corp, like we're qualified, right? Maybe we're there. Maybe Nathan mentioned this 80 point thing, right? You can go to the B Impact Assessment. You can go Google B Corp, right? And there's a spot on there, the B Impact Assessment. It doesn't cost you anything. You can just go right in, enter your data, right? And you can get, it'll kick out to you. Now, this is, has not, an analyst hasn't looked at it, kind of non audit In the accounting world, we'd call these non-audited financials. We'd have foot <laughs> things all over the place, right? We'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> you can run that and go through that process. It probably takes like how much, how long would it take for someone to go through that? Like, I mean, it's not short, but it's, you know, you can get through it in a, you sit down and dedicate what a couple hours, maybe less. Yeah. I, I mean, I usually tell people that initial run take about two, three hours, no more um, and try to get like your baseline score. But yeah, I mean, and if you really want to go in depth and, but chances are you don't have any of the, you probably don't have the data to track it. Uh, so right. like, yeah, I mean, but yeah, you can take it. I mean, and I always say that's a great place, you know, even if a company's out there that isn't necessarily looking to certify for whatever reason, it's just not the right time or they don't have the resources right now um, or they don't like my beard, so they're not going to hire me. Um, you can take it and make your company better. It's a free tool, but like you, and as you go through it and Kenji, you and I went through this, I'd love that. Like, I didn't know how much I would enjoy, you know, seeing the aha moments on your face as you went through it and went like, huh, that's something we could do. Huh? Yeah. I had never thought about doing that. I still remember the the best example of, you know, so as you're going through this, like, I, you know, they ask questions and you start to see like, what are best practices? You know, and not, we're not expecting everybody to be Patagonian, put their company in a charitable trust, but you start yeah, going through right. and you're like, huh, do good companies really like, like when you see like the parental leave options um, or, you know, different, like, you know, some of these benefits where you're like, people, really that's a thing huh <laughs> you know like and i remember the one for you was there was a question about like have you in the last 12 months have you performed like a pay equity analysis You're like no but i'd love to like i have no yeah. idea what my blind spots are i'm like lucky for you i've got this awesome nonprofit in athens it's called the minority business and nonprofit association and michelle came in and she told me we talked the other day and she used you as an example because she said some companies do them to check a box so they can say not only did we do one we hired a black woman to do one. Um, but if she's given the results, they're like, okay, cool. Like we didn't really care about the results. We just wanted to be able to say we did one. And then she talks to, so she was like, and then when I worked with Kenji, like he wanted to know what blind spots he had, if he had any. And then when you went through the results, like, what are my action items? Like, what do I need to do to become better as a company, as a CEO, all these different things. And it was, it was, it's those types of things. I think that, um, that you get out of going through the assessment again, whether you want to certify yeah. or not, there's some powerful moments of like, maybe I'm not running as great. I always say, take it from good to great. I'm running a good company. We take good care of our people, but how do you go from good to great? And I think that assessment, there's a lot of, you know, yeah. and even if it's, you know, again, right now, maybe we're not going to get all the way to 80, but I took it and we're at a 40. How do I just attack one section of this assessment and see if, you know, how can I improve our worker score? What is it? Is it benefits? Is it things? Because there's moments where, I mean, you guys are an accounting firm, so I don't talk about accounting advice, but, you know, for me, early stage, like I can't afford to get, you know, I'm about to make my first offer. I can't afford to, we can't afford to do healthcare yet. Um, but I, but as I'm planning my business, I know that that's, 
next and i'm looking at the b impact assessment of like hmm what kind of benefits do i want to offer when you know and and how do i start kind of accruing yeah. for those now and planning and budgeting for them so it's a beautiful tool it really is it is again and i tell you it's be if you're an accountant you're going to like it right it is there are scores to it there's ranges of scores depending on how you you know you can check the boxes, all the things like it's, it's a helpful tool to kind of help guide you. And I, it, it does, it opens up some like thoughts of like, I know ne we never considered that. Right. And I think that that is people all the time. The reason we even have this damn podcast is because like people are like, Oh, you and Matthew do all these crazy weird things. Yeah. Maybe like we just, we rip things off and plagiarize the hell out of so many other industries. Like we're, we're always like stealing ideas from elsewhere. And so to me, this is just another example of like, okay, cool. They've got a measurable thing. We, like we talked with Michelle, like, oh, what are our blind spots? What are we missing? Like, cool. If we add those or we're in this community where there's other ideas, like, man, we could, if we're doing something wrong, like that's a, that's one of our probably weird few strengths that Matthew and I have. Like we, we can, we have so, you know, little fear of failing or being wrong. Like, oh, okay, we were completely wrong about that. Let's change our minds and do something different. If we can find a better idea. When it's just he and I talking, it's this freaking echo chamber. And we just sit there and drink beers and like, oh, this sounds right. And we're like, oh, I never considered that maybe there's a better way to do something. So it's a great tool for that, that I think lots of businesses, especially accountants would, would dig for sure. Um, so I just have to, while you guys have a pause, like, Nathan, you have dogs that bark. I have dogs that sit in my lap during the tornado warnings. So like for those on YouTube that saw Apollo jump in my lap, there is a tornado outside, a tornado warning outside. Yeah, downtown area. Atlanta. So, so he is, uh, he's a little nervous, a little jittery, but he's not, he's not barking. So that's, that's he not usually is barking. So okay. So yeah. tornado is equal. Okay. Not barking. That's not tornado normal. is like, go sit with dad. So thunder, thunder for, we have three, two of them are sisters from the same litter. And one of them just sleeps right through it. And the other one, you'll find her like in the bathtub, like shaking. She, <laughs> or And she will also like, there's a closet over here that she will like, you'll be like, where is she? And she has somehow like woven her way into like boxes of Christmas decoration, whatever is stuffed into that closet <laughs> and just like hiding in there, like trembling and like, you're just like, but the other one. So, but yeah. it's nice to know, because considering I'm in Athens, which means that's my warning, my pre-tornado warning that two hours from now. <laughs> you get two hours, you're going to get it, dude. Uh, but uh, but way. for the YouTube watchers, they're like, why is their dog jumping up? Like, that's kind of random. Yeah, no so, normally. No, I just wanted to acknowledge it, even though on the podcast, you can't see this. Apollo is not usually this, like, in my lap, so. Well, let's, um, let's start winding her down here. Um, I think. On that uh, note. So Matthew yeah. starts talking about his dogs. Okay, I see how it is. Well, no, I know we, we kind of covered the base. We talked about what are B, you know, what are B Corps? Why did we do it? We gave some little insights into the process. It's a it's a more detailed process. I, I will plug for Nathan. Um, when we looked at this, you can go solo on this, absolutely, if you feel like it. I know myself well enough to where I'm like, no, no, solo. no. Nathan, I'd met Nathan, and I'm like, he'd helped guide us through that process. We were his first client correct you were the yeah let's i mean let's touch on that story real quick <laughs> so essentially i'm i'm working and i'm doing my the job i was at for i ended up total like five and a half six years um for a ceo i loved and during covid somebody had reached out to us and like hey could we do this B, you know b corp thing which is a fun story he and i stayed connected and he's now the executive director of tedx Folsom, which I just spoke at. So anyway, so that's a cool backstory. But we ran that one through the company during COVID when it was like, any revenue is good revenue. Yeah. Um, and then when you came and we're like, hey, so I mentioned this to the dinner table and, you know, my wife, Rochelle, said I need to reach out to you, who I'd met at a Go Beyond Profit event. And uh, I remember going to Jeff and being like, hey, man, so and this is B Corp ethos. Like, I love this. It's like, so I have somebody who wants to pay us or pay me to do B Corp. So do you want me just to set them up in QuickBooks and like this just be part of my, just give me an allocation? And he was like, no. And I'm like, huh? He's like, I want you to start your own company. And he's like, I want you to start your own LLC. He goes, man, you've been like putting in the work. Like you, there's a chance you could take this and really run with it. So let's see what you do. Like just start it, do this one, see what happens. And then one turned into somebody else from like the B local Georgia board knew somebody. And now I got a client too. And now one of the old UGA projects from years ago was like, we're ready to finish. I got project three. 
And so that was how I started the business was literally, and I remember Kenji's reaction was like, oh man, I love being client number one. Um, <laughs> just be glad you were client number one. I've raised those rates. Uh, but uh, <laughs> But it was that, that kind of fun stuff too of you coaching me through like, and I had been at a professional services, professional consulting company. So I, I knew enough about what I was doing, but yeah, that was a, uh, that, I mean, that was just, it's, and it's crazy too, you know, the, the old like Jim Rohn quote, always work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Or like, why am I to go beyond profit? You know, like some of these events, like right, when you're just right. out networking, you never know who you're going to meet. And it's funny. Cause I remember sticking around, I don't even know who I was trying to meet that was on the panel. And I met Rochelle and just talking to her and I had my, I probably, I think I had this shirt on um, because I pretty much just always wear this shirt. I wash it, I promise. Um, And I talked to you and we ended up talking for like 20 minutes about B Corp and her work and Dragon Army and all these different things. And, you know, and then this, the, this weird universe that opened up to me just through meeting Rochelle and like, next thing you know, I'm on like Jeff Hillemeyer's podcast. He's calling me Mr. B Corp and, you know, like all these things. And I just started to build that brand. And when you came along, I started the LLC. And then, yeah, last July, I kind of had that moment of like, I think it's, I think it's time, you know, and like, you know, I've always wanted to do this and you always have those thoughts that you know, when you're at your day job, like I could run this company so much better. And now you're like, okay, well, <laughs> here you go. Here's a company. Yeah. Now you run one. So, um, but yeah, and I would say that too. And it's not a same. A, a, I will say a couple things about like hiring the consultant, which is why I probably find so much success in professional services because we get the outsourcing of things we're not good at. But it's also people hear consultant and they're like, "Oh God, how much?" And I mean, honestly, depending on the complexity, you're probably going to be low five figures um to mid four figures so this isn't like some sort of like oh my god we're going to spend one hundred fifty thousand to get b corp not even close um mm -hmm. probably not even 10 percent of that so don't be afraid of the word consultant but also the i think the value add of working with somebody who's good at this and there's several there's carolina miranda who's a friend and mentor um out in california the the, the difference is and kenji you can attest to this is not only were we able, like, you know, I could help you check the boxes and here's some policies that you're never going to do anything with, or we can really go through this and talk about like, how do we use this to make your company better? What kind of marketing stories can we tell with our certification? Like, how can we realize some of the ROI on it? Because at the end of the day, people don't want to talk ROI because they're like, well, we just do good because we do good. Well, everybody's talking about doing good. If you're actually doing it, get your ROI. Um, you know what I mean? Like get yeah. that. Make, out of, make use of it for sure yes and so for i sure. think that is a very important you know tool of like and then not only just the roi piece but how do you implement this how do you how do you make your like get your employees excited that they work for a b corp how do you get them to understand what it is so you can actually also use it as a recruitment and a retention tool so all those pieces of like implementing it and i know this firsthand because at advic we didn't i don't even know if consultants were a thing when we did it i was the student consultant that went to work for them but we certified and then we all kind of high fived and then we went, now what? Yeah. Versus when you work with somebody who knows the routine and I, you know, not to brag, but I'm pretty well networked. You've been through it. You've gone through it. And, and, so you and start that, to like yeah. open doors for you post certification too, where it's like, Hey, where I, by the way, Kenji, I need you to speak on a panel on that uh, build Southeast in September. Um, but seriously, uh, we'll talk about that later, but, uh, <laughs> but like, those are the types of things I think that work with, with those connections and, and really what I'm trying to do with all the hats I'm wearing, um, with be local Georgia and the build Southeast, you know, planning committee and is, you know, and I'm in Birmingham and I'm in, going to Kentucky next month. I'm going to new Orleans later this month. I'm going to Raleigh, like all these, you know, is, is how do we build this you know, when Kenji pays me a dollar for my consulting and then I need a marketing consultant, how do I then go take that dollar to the marketing consultant? You know, how do we right. keep this like purpose driven economy and really make the the free market case that this is a a sound, um, profitable way to run a business that that that, that there is demand for people that run businesses like this, that there's a desire to work with each other and to support like-minded, purpose-driven, mission-driven entrepreneurs, businesses, employees. So I think that's the important part too. And I think that that's what comes from, you can do it on your own, but I, I think it's worth the-, the I agree. I, I, I'll just say that, you know, again, I think if you're listening and this is intriguing to you at all, take a look at it, go out and take a look at the website. But I mean, I think the things that to think about are, um, if you'd like a clear framework, an objective framework 
for how to make improvements in your business. In particular, right away, in all those five pillars, but your, your workers, your community, there's a great way and lens to look at how to make improvement and how to create a baseline for yourself as a business and then go, okay, cool. We got a baseline. We have numbers on that. Let's figure out how we improve them, right? You can make great improvement there. A word that Matthew actually mentions a lot of acuity is sustainability and not in the same terms that most people in ESG or SDG or all the buzzwords or B Corp. We just think about it being a good sustainable business in many ways. And I think for us, we believe that the B Corp, being a B Corp and staying consistent in that, it helps us be sustainable from a culture standpoint. Lots of the things that B Corps are out and about are important to Matthew and I and our team as a culture. And if we stay focused on those and measure that, we're going to stay in a much better way to make sure that culture is sustainable, whether the rest of the company throws me and Matthew out at some point or whatever, right? Or we, we walk off in the sunset is that if we focus on this path, it helps us keep from drifting on things like culture and things that are important. And so if people are interested in that, take a look. You can go your own way. I recommend, we're plugging Nathan, get a consultant. There's lots of them out there. It's really helpful to have someone kind of navigate it because it's no, it's serious. It's, it's no joke. It's not a pledge. It's not a, who I, I, you know, I got my little certificate. It is, it's a commitment, but I think that's what people are looking for in this space. So um, Nathan, we're, we're going to, as we always wrap up, I forgot to tell you this first, we always rate our beers, but before we rate all of our beers and I'll pull up our rating scale here. Wonderful. Where can people connect with you? What's the best way for people to connect with you? Oh, I think you know the answer to that, Kenji. It's on LinkedIn, the only social media I use. Um, yeah, so linkedin.com slash Nathan A. Stuck. By the way, a little LinkedIn hack. If you put your middle initial at the end of your first name, because there's no middle initial bar, you can pick up on every salesperson that's in your inbox because you nobody would call me Nathan A. So I'm Nathan A. Stuck on LinkedIn. See, I said it a couple of times, a little marketing. Those are marketing degrees. Um, you know, the, the other hack on that too, though, people are doing is they're using emojis in with their names. Like that's the other one people are doing these days is all the emojis and the names. That's another way. To get people to, ooh, that looks kind of cool. Nathan put like a, a fire emoji after his name, but also that stuff comes through too when they're spamming you. Ah, uh, yeah, it's gotten bad. Don't ruin LinkedIn, people. Come on, salespeople. Like you can look <laughs> up where I went to school and like send me something in the mail that makes me go like, I'll take your call. Um, and Just fill my inbox. Anyway, so I'm, I'm there. And then on the, uh, as far as the, uh, the World Wide Web, um, yeah. Profitable Purpose Consulting, Dot com and then you can also go to you know uh, LinkedIn profitable purpose consulting I'm I'll I'll show up and also you know be local Georgia on LinkedIn is probably our most I do have some uh, Gen Z MBA fellows now who are trying to revive our Instagram but I I can't help myself I go to post something and then 30 minutes later I'm scrolling through and watching videos and I forgot what I went on Instagram to do so I primarily I do the same thing on LinkedIn but at least I I feel less bad about it so That's yeah LinkedIn, LinkedIn is is probably the place for for all three. And then obviously shameless plug, the, the website will is not hopefully will be live by the time this airs, but might not be. But build southeast, Raleigh, September 21st through the 22nd. Um, I'm gonna get to hear from Kenji. I'm gonna talk him into this. So uh, but should be a really cool event everywhere from like DC from the DMV area or from the DMV area all the way down to uh Louisiana, Alabama will be in the house, Kentucky, Tennessee. Nice. Um, so it should just be a beautiful, um, gathering. It's a B Corp event. So we know there'll be beer. I mean, listen, there's not, Oh, there's a, there's a kickoff party on Thursday. And then there's an after party when, after we wrap on Friday. So. Beautiful. Okay. I'm you're, you're, you're selling me on this. All right. So let's go rate some beers here. I'm going to, Matthew, you can tell me, is, is it, can you see it, Matthew? I can see it this time. You can see it untapped folks. Don't forget to always check out untapped. I'm drinking the automatic here from creature comforts. Uh, I just love creature comforts. Uh, on the scale, Nathan, of, of one to or zero to five in half point increments, I like this one a lot. I, I'm giving point. it. I'm you giving it a four point two five. You can go quarter point, point increments, two. Nathan. Just so you know, quarter point increments, four point two five. Nathan, you're you're having the. Um, the He's having the doctor, Athena. Yep. The Athena. Oh, the Paradiso Athena, but he's kind of doctored it. Well. Well, this one's a tart cherry. Red. Yeah, it's not exactly the one you have. Well, he did his that? Athena. He he took the regular Athena and made it his parody. So oh, right, I did. I did. I did. So he well, has to well, he has to do the regular or Athena. Okay, that's fair. We'll do the regular with with Nathan style. Nathan, how would you rate your drink here? Minus minus your doctoring. 
Oh, oh he can't smell. Doctoring, it's a terrible beer. Uh, with the doctoring, <laughs> I mean, the sweet and the sour of a good Berliner Weiss. I mean, this honestly, with the raspberry syrup, is about as authentic as you can get. That isn't, you know, called Berliner Kindle. Um, that isn't Berliner Weiss or Rot. Um, shameless. So it, so it would be a five with your doctoring. Without your doctoring, you're let's say saying like three five, three okay. three seven five. What? Where are we? No, I mean, we? I don't want to do it just uh, just justice though. Like, I feel like. I don't know. Is there a way to put like what did you think with a comment like with yeah. this year? Five yeah. Hours? Oh, you can put in the comments. I'm gonna put, put a comment. You you put you put your rating of what you just drank. I'm gonna put a comment that this was doctored. You know, with um. Yeah. Then I would say yeah, it's a full five with the raspberry syrup. It's delicious. Okay. So okay, so Matthew. Know. Doctored by Nathan. Okay, and Matthew, you had the. Uh... I had the red hair sticky oatmeal stout. There it is, sticky stout. Yep. It's the oatmeal. Yeah. What um, do you think? We're gonna go three seven five. Nice, nice little taste. Okay. Nice and easy. That's that's a pretty good one for you. It's not a okay. crazy buy again every time, but like it's it's a good it's good. Beer. It's worth it. Um. All right, folks. When we got to drop these new episodes, you got to subscribe. Check us out here. Um. Thanks to Nathan being on. I will say the one thing that Matthew and I are contributing, we know that we're contributing to the B Corp community to actually give more diversity is we're bringing more guys to the B Corp world that do not grow good facial hair. That is a big premise. Last time I was at a B Corp event, everybody there was just rocking some killer facial hair. And I was like, neither uh, of us can grow a beard to save our lives. So Sorry, we're helping I... diversify in that the, way. The, the, For the, the follically facial follicle challenge, challenge, we're bringing that to yeah, we're bringing well, it's up. like B Corp. It's it's basically like going to a brewery, except I don't wear Carhartts and flannels. There you go. It's like that same, <laughs> like it's like that Asheville like beard thing going on. So yeah, no, there's a lot of uh, a lot of good beards in the B Corp space, especially when you there get to Georgia, go. where you get Jake and Zach and all of us. Like where I might have the worst beard. Oh, geez, well, it's, it's, it's intimidating. Well, it's Matt, not, I'm bringing Matthew cool. with me next time just for support on the on the no um, non facial hair growers. But cheers again, everyone. Thanks oh, for listening. And uh, feel free to drop us some questions um, for, for next episode. Awesome. Thanks. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, everybody.